Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is, and I want you to watch this first part. It's going to be fairly quick, um, and then you guys can get started. So eyes here um, or on one of the screens where you can see this, and um, until we're done with this part. Also, no talking. So come watch. Um, if you have questions, please ask them. Otherwise, otherwise, save it. Okay, so when I'm making this head shape, this one's a little bit long and thin, just fix that. Um, I'm going to make it very much rounded. It's a dome shape. Um, the only squarish portion is the front of the jaw, and that's only on certain people. Like me, for example, I'm pretty rounded all the way through, both bone structure and because I'm fat. So. Um, I'm going to round all of this. Where do the eyes go? Halfway. Right in the middle of the head, not up towards the top. So once I've got this pretty well figured out, the right general shape. I don't actually think that's small. Um, it might be, but. It looks like it. Yeah. And it smells weird. Um, yeah. It's I know, but like it doesn't extra plastic. Like that. That's good. So, um, we've got this. I'm gonna. This one's gonna be kind of a maybe more square jawed person. But notice that this is very much rounded. Profile of this is dome, not block. Um, so it's very rounded this way um, and if you're going to make it a bit flatter like you're not going to go as far down the sides of the head the part of it that's showing still needs to be very round and again um, please just watch right now the it's really hard to yell over the all of the the slapping of the clay which is what you guys are going to need to do so just watch um, if you can't see very well feel free to move um, closer so I'm going to tone this down a little bit, make the head a little bit wider. So I'm flattening this, but notice I'm not just flattening like that, because that's making the head the wrong shape. I'm widening it a bit out through there. And, um, and like I said, the jaw and chin, that's the only place where you have a corner on your chin, um, pretty much. So um, we're going here, and I'm going to measure right around half. Yeah, it's somewhere in, somewhere in there. Um, and I'm going to just take my thumbs. Eyes are about um, an eye width apart. So I'm going to place my thumbs and um, make some deep sockets there. Um, and these are just the beginnings. This is not actually um, deep into the eye socket. This is just to kind of the beginnings of the outline of the cheekbone structure. Your cheekbones, um, if you touch, there's like the tip of your cheekbone, which is um, underneath the edge of your eye, and then right below your temple and in front of your ear, there's another end of it, another knob, and you kind of draw a line between those, and that's the line of your cheekbones. Um, and they vary a bit, but that hollowness right next to um, the where the temple goes, and that's the top of the cheekbone, that's an important thing for just getting the head structure right. You're not going to be able to make eyes that look human if they're not in a human skull. Um, so this first part, getting the shape right. Now here I'm going to actually take some of this and drag this together. You're also, your cheekbones end somewhere in here. So I'm going to drag some of this over and up to make the nose. If this is more of a... I don't know, Western European nose, like mine. Um, it comes in a little bit um, at the eyes. Um, so the eyebrows stick up a little bit more. So males have a stronger um, eyebrow bone, the superciliary arch. Um, yep, superciliary. Apparently your eyes are silly, and this is, this is super of them up above. Um, and, uh, and then there's the cheekbone is the zygomatic arch. Um, 
pretty sure. Um, now that I'm recording it, I'm just like, oh, hope I didn't get that wrong. It's been a while since I've actually looked them up. So, um, and then the outside edge of your eye, your eyes, um, if you look at like a skull, which, oh, they still have mine on stage. Um, they gave back most of my stuff, but they didn't give me back my skulls. Um, if you look at a skull, the eye socket's actually kind of squarish, particularly the upper eyebrow. But um, this edge, the outer edge of your eye comes back quite a bit. It should not be level here. So you pull that out and um, across, and that's partly where you determine where those are and your cheekbone. Um, sticks out a little bit as the front edge of that. So then we're gonna come down in here again and um, right in here I'll push that up and often you don't need to add anything to make your nose. Um, and then to make your nostrils it's like one of my dad's dad jokes. How come gorillas got such big nostrils? Because the they got such big fingers. So to make nostrils they're about the right size if you shove your fingers up in there. So that's, um, and then nose shapes vary a lot. This is not mine. Uh, mine comes, I would drag some of this more out off of this part and up onto the tip, um, but it's all very soft and rounded. You can have, uh, yeah, like this part of the nose varies probably as much as anything else on the human face. Um, the only other thing that's, I think, close is lip, um, lip uh, volume, like how big the lips are. Um, and again, because those are the soft parts, the skull is um, pretty even. So we've got that. Um, then I'm going to kind of come in here and push down a little bit right here, start defining the, um, it helps to see where the cheekbone goes and where it is, and it starts um, giving a little bit of that, uh, the nasolabial fold, which is the smile lines, um, that muscle structure that kind of bulks up. Your lips will come down in here, and but you, they, your face, the skull protrudes pretty far forward. Your teeth go clear back um, into your head, so um, there's, but they, when they stick forward, that protrusion right there um, will show up. And then work on symmetry. And that's as far as you need to get today. Um, I, for a male, you, I um, probably want this a little bit stronger. The skull kind of comes and doesn't scoop up quite as much. So um, I want to make this just a touch stronger. Um, and I can do that by you know, kind of smoothing, a, pulling clay away from it, or digging a little more up into there. That's probably a little bit closer, but that means I've got to fill more in here when I do the eyes. Um, and when we do them, we're just going to um, add a, like a dome shape that's about right. Um, if you, um, if you get past um, this, you want to get like the cheekbones, lined up, and depending on how um, youthful and, um, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? Um, depending on how youthful the face is um, and how thin. Um, so very young, you've got extra fat in your face that is why they, they call it baby fat. Like you can be skinny everywhere else, but just because you're young, you'll have a little bit more um, on and around your cheekbones. You lose that baby fat later on, but you know, depending on your general fat, you might, you know, still have fat in your face. It's just a little bit different. Um, so depending on how, and, and thin faces and, um, you know, national origin, with which um, will be uh, not national exactly, but world area origin. It's not the same thing as race, but um, it's more ethnicity, but the, those terms are constantly being redefined and vague and everything. Anyway, 
depending on your cheekbone structure, um, how high, how, what angle they're at, will determine how much they show, which is why it's good for you to use yourself as a model, so that you've got at least one example of what a cheekbone is supposed to look like. Um, and then um, for the nasolabial folds, if you don't have quite as not, uh, m enough buildup right there, it can be really good. Generally, you want to make things start out too defined. So you would add a fold like this and then smooth it down. Um, and then that will still have that defined cheekbone over there, but fill in some of that space over here um, at just the right point and then it kind of comes down and wraps around and thins out as it attaches more to the chin. So I can soften that up but that's in the right place and is about the right structure. We want to really understand where the muscles go more than getting the exact proportions of them right and I want you to understand how the face works three-dimensionally. Um, most people, uh, yeah I think 93% um, it's easier for them to think two-dimensionally and we know we see pictures from the front and like even for identifiers we've got the mug shot straight from the front straight from the side and that doesn't show you the subtlety of how it moves when you're looking at the three-quarters view and everything so how that fit how that moves through space and you know like this will wrap down around here but it doesn't just it's not just a line, it's wrapping down and it's matching that curve. The cheekbone isn't just in, you don't only see it in profile, it goes from right around here and then it's got a bulge right around there and then you kind of adapt that. So that's how far we want to get today. So get to it and I'll come around and help where I can um, and ask for it when you need it.